Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Jack. Um, I'm a third year student um, studying Bachelor of, of um, Art History and Curating. And um, today we're very lucky to have um, four artists to join us for this um, panel discussion about um, photography and um, belonging, how this concept of belonging has been utilized in um, photography. And I, as always, um, before we begin our um, panel discussion, I would like to um, acknowledge the um, traditional owners of this land, on which um, uh, on this land which um, the people of Kulu nations. And I would like to um, acknowledge the um, Bunurong people, and I repay my respect to um, their elders, past and present. And I really appreciate this opportunity to hold this panel on this land, and I understand their sovereignty has never been ceded. And I think I will start by um, um, letting you introduce yourself to the audience, so that it, it's much easier for them to understand your practice. And so we have um, Shakai Gosden and um, Chantal Stewart, um, Leon Rice Wellen, and Serena Ho. And all, all of them are from uh, Fine Arts, um, Monash Fine Art, and third year students as well. You want to start first? Um. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shaked. Is this good? Yeah. Um, I study fine art here at Monash. I'm an artist located here as well. Um, and I think my work has been heavily influenced by my cultural uh, background, um, I guess more recently. And it's helped me find out, I guess, a lot more about myself and what I want to do with my art. Um, when there are so many things that you want to do and so many directions that you want to take um, with creative uh, practices. Um, yeah. um, my name is Chantal, I use they them pronouns. Um, my photography, I'm based in Melbourne, my photography focuses around like feminist issues and sexism um, to help connect with women and non-binary people um, and everything like that. Hello, I'm Leon. Is that working? Um, yeah, I'm also based in um, Nam, Melbourne. I might use they, them pronouns. Um, I've got a sort of film and photography practice that is centered a lot of this space in the urban environment and also natural environment and all the things that go on there. Um, yeah. I'm Serena, also based in Nam, and my practice um, is kind of centered around like moments of coincidence and memory and um, recently gone into a more like photography digital sort of realm but also like very object focused with like painting and mark making um, yeah and very much about like place and responding to spaces as well. Thank, thank you all and I think we can jump right into our topics today and belonging um, it's such a um, broad concept and and artists have been um, using this idea into their practice for a long time and it's quite a common thing to see and um, it covers a wide variety of um, um, ideas, other ideas under that, this um, huge tree and um, like memories, um, identities and co other cultural aspects as well and I want to ask Leon first uh, <laughs> Um, you have um, relatively longer experience with um, photograph practice. Um, I want to bring you in here first and there are so many um, photography exhibitions that um, explore the concept of belonging and especially the ones like um, focusing on human. Um, this um, 
this um, this concept of human in in the um, in the picture, and like photo twenty twenty two with its title is human, and um, even though I only got visit partially of that huge exhibition across Melbourne, Victoria, and I did see a lot of the works um, explore the idea around um, cultural identity and memories, um, how they attach to their, um, their surroundings, their living spaces. And I want to ask, um, what's your perspective on um, photography serve as a cultural bridge and uh, capturing or conveying um, this sense of belonging for individuals and communities and across this diverse um, co cultural background? Well, it's a big question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know really know, quite no way to begin with it. I guess as you said, I've got a fairly long history with photography, like it was in terms of thinking of myself as a visual artist, it was the first thing I got into as a sort of young teenager. Um, connected with my parents also really into it as well, and it was very much around sort of landscape photography. And I went through a phase of sort of like street photography and that, and then it's a bit more, not so much taking photos of strangers, but still very street or urban photography. Um, and I guess it's interesting, as you said, the human. It's like I've I've not one to have a lot of figures or people in my photography. I'm not I'm not so much into portraiture. I don't. That's just the way I found. But I think it's because I view my own figure, my own presence in the images I capture, and it's very core to sort of how you you're presenting your perspective or identity with this place or in this space by how you observe the world, and that's sort of what you're trying to kind of represent. Um, yeah, and to sort of show, to just kind of explore how you feel that you belong or how you feel a part of a space. I mean, yeah. Um, I don't. I mean, in terms of a cultural bridge, I guess. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I feel like as a white Australian, I'm very my and I own as a, well settler on this land as well. It's kind of trying to understand my role within this, on this sort of country, and sort of, you know, unsit Aboriginal country, as someone who is a part of sort of settler colonialism, and trying to understand how you can um, reflect that and think about that and explore that through your images, and also reflect a sort of and explore a sort of world and how it, it is representing that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and um, from, as we discuss, um, identity is also a part of belonging. And I want to add, Chantal, about um, your practice. And I believe delivering um, the mess, the sense of belonging um, to the viewers plays quite well from your works. And I saw on your um, social media about the recent show you have. Um, would you like to tell us about the works in there? Just sim simply um, tell us and how you portray um, the personal identity in there. Um, so the most recent show I have, um, it's coming up in November. It's with Platform Exhibitions. It's called Out of This World. Um, so the concept is around, so it's a bunch of artists showing a lot of surrealist artworks. Um, the pieces I've chosen are called Beautiful is Boring and that's three photos that feature like bold blocks of colour and I've painted myself entirely blue and posing in like a Vogue-esque model sort of way. Um, I wanted to create like, because uh, I know a lot of women and like femme presenting people experience pressure to look beautiful and to look perfect. And I wanted to create a space where, like, I've painted myself like a very unnatural colour and I'm sort of mocking Vogue. So I've had a few different people come up and be like, I relate to that photo because I don't look perfect and I don't look like these people on Vogue. I look different. Um, and I find that there's, like, a belonging in the photos and my own personal belonging because... 
obviously being a femme presenting person, I experience like being held up to an unreasonable standard. Um, so I've had a lot of different femme presenting people show and explain to me how they've found like a relation with my work because they too aren't like model because it's unrealistic. Um, yeah. Um, uh, feminism covers also quite a large range of um, ideas and practice and it's quite a huge topic of research and um, you specifically focus on um, the ways women are treated and sexism and um, what ideas that brings you focus on um, capturing this concept into the image? Um, well, I've drawn a lot of personal experience. Obviously, growing up being perceived as a woman, I've experienced a lot of different things from the world and specifically men. Um, so, I find that using these sort of like, like photography helps allow for other femme presenting people to feel like they also have a space and a feeling seen. Um, I've done works in the past where I've talked about my own personal feelings in relation to a certain trauma and I've had women and femme presenting people come up and go, that is exactly how I felt, I just didn't know how to explain it. So it helps create like a safe space for people to feel like they're being seen and heard. Okay. Um, sorry, I think I dropped one question. And um, I want to bring Shakay in uh, for discussing the cultural aspects as well. As well. Um, I believe your um, cultural background, as you say, certainly has a critical, critical impact on your practice. And do you want to tell us about more about your practice? And is there any specific patterns or um, um, like impressions that you put more attention to throughout your practice? Um, I think I've recently been focusing on using appropriation, not necessarily patterns. The visual elements of it will change, but I have been using, I guess portraiture and self-portraiture, which is a big battle to combat when you're the photographer and the model. Um, but I've had help with assistance and still figuring out the best ways to approach these things. Um, so that's the closest thing, I guess, to pattern that I could say. Um, but I guess like this repetition of, you know, my same face as the artist in the work, um, which I do, I think, probably because I used to love painting portraiture, but I never felt that it really truly expressed how I felt or how I wanted to express um, my creativity and my work. But yeah, I think I do try to you know, focus on a specific color palette depending on um, what project I'm doing. Like my first uh, large portrait that I've done recently uh, was like quite large scale and I quite like that and I've continually been working on works to make it quite large scale because they respond to I guess um, uh, the suppressed voice um, and like silencing um, that you know my like people have experienced um, for a long time uh, so to be able to put that on really large scale is quite empowering um, and it is a consistent, I guess, element so far in my practice. Um, I want to ask about the appropriation part. Um, um, you've shown me before that um, that's you're you're always been um, not always um, constantly be focusing on appropriating the other works and um, your most serious one um, the that's appropriating the um, the Last Supper and like this transformation of um, materials and deta details um, but with um, the newer technology and methods um, I want to ask what do you feel about this journey of like 
re recontextualizing your um your own cultural history and like seeking your place in this world. Um, yeah, thanks. That's a great question. So I don't think I've outlined, but I'm Jewish. Um, so the Last Supper is obviously a Christian but a painting that's been repeated many times. So my response to that painting, which is one that's being presented mainly, obviously, in Italy um, and in churches and I guess all over the world is this iconic uh, artwork that sort of um, tells a story of a history that hasn't necessarily treated, um, you know, my people so well from specifically that point in time. Um, so I guess it's sort of like a reappropriation as a reclamation and that process has been really, I guess, um, it helps me feel more comfortable and I guess feel like um, more confident in, I guess, who I am uh, and my own identity by but, but the actual physical process of doing it um, has been really interesting because it's sort of like, it's humorous, but it's also quite serious. So people are able to engage in it quite easily because of the humor and the, recognize it, the easily recognizable, I guess, composition. Um, but then to place the person like that I am physically in each of those, uh, each of those people, um, that does change the narrative completely. Um, and I guess it sort of questions the context as well. Um, it's been an enjoyable process. I do have to learn a lot more um, about like different religions as well from it, um, which I do enjoy because I like learning about history. Um, so it's been enjoyable, um, but definitely not what I expected that I'd be doing at least a year ago. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the next question I want to ask, Serene, um, before we go on to discuss belonging and photography, um, um, you mentioned you got, um, even before this, um, this panel, you, you mentioned you, you have just got into the world of photography not long ago. And would you tell us uh, what kind of magic um, brings you into this um, art field? Um, I guess kind of like accessibility a little bit, like traveling last year um, was kind of when I started making more like photographic collections and stuff, just some things that I was seeing. Um, yeah, like I mean everybody, most people have like a phone that enables you to do that and I, that is kind of just where it began and then I guess also this is a bit like cliche but Instagram honestly <laughs> because like it kind of does function as like your own space to kind of curate and and like show photos and stuff or just even for your own pleasure I suppose and um so yeah when I was like traveling for like six months that was kind of it just because I was alone quite a lot and it's kind of like a fun thing to do and um like one thing like I was collecting like Christmas trees that had died like images of Christmas trees that were left on the street after Christmas and it carried on for like two months and it was just like something humorous for me to do when I was alone, I guess. Um, so yeah, I kind of started there, but also um, there was one photographer whose work I saw that like, I found very moving and I hadn't really had a reaction to photography like that before, um, which, yeah, I suppose like opened me up to seeing like the possibilities, I guess, um, of photography. And I guess in comparison to what I was doing, it's, in my mind, like at the very simple parts of it, like it plays into a lot of like art principles and stuff, and it, and there are quite like rigid ways in which a photograph can be like satisfying for someone to look at, um, and then like playing with those sort of things, and um, yeah, it's just kind of what made me interested. Thank you, and I want to discuss about um, your works that capturing the ordinary scene and um, around your life and. Um, especially the ones um, um, seems like you add a little extra um, element into the frame um, um, on your Instagram that um, is 
quite a lot of like um, wet paints uh, works. Um, would you tell us why you add these oddities um, into these mundane images? Um, actually, I'm not adding them there, just there. So it, it must be for like the council or something. They have like a set template for these like wet paint signs, like they're all the same font and stuff. And then so when people are like painting in public, like on the street, they just like print them out obviously and tape them on there. Um, so I guess what it's more so about is just like finding these like funny patterns um, or like coming across these like funny kind of things. Um, and yeah, that it is kind of like scattered throughout the city. And um, I guess that's a bit of like that chance and coincidence of coming across them. But then also like I have like friends that send them to me as well. Like they see them and it's like a nice like, oh, I thought of you when I saw this. But I, the idea that they're just using this one template across the whole city is kind of humorous to me. I don't know why, but it just seems kind of ridiculous. But um, yeah, so just capturing like the randomness, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty interesting because I remember I saw a couple is the wet paints stick on the ground instead of a wall. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and sometimes they are on the ground and you're like, what am I, what am I meant to be looking at? And then it's also like tempting fate kind of, it's like, should I touch it? Like, I don't know, you know, don't know how long this sign's been here for, yeah. here forever. Yeah, can I add to it? Because yeah. I, I love those sort of signs. I think there's something really fun about photographing them because you're divorcing them from the very specific purpose they have. They're like, these are very declarative. They're all these sort of informational signs that are meant to be telling you this is specific to something, this place, this time, this for a certain period, but by just photographing them and abstracting from that, they become these sort of weird little objects and they're communicating that the message is completely lost now mm -hmm. or then takes on something completely different because you've yeah. just, it's not, yeah, it's fallen off, it's not where it's supposed to be, or it's, yeah, you've just got, gathered got these from the places where the paint would be now be dry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Leon, the concept of this urban areas in three, uh, street scenery is one of the common elements that um, keep appearing from your works and um, and you both um, you and Serena both have um, similar points on the um, this interaction and engagement is in a space um, how people see a familiar space and react to it and um, can you tell us um, what kind of idea what is there any inspiration that typically draws your attention to this? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of things. Um, I think I was just writing some notes on the question you asked at the start because I was thinking some things I didn't say, but I was just thinking about the fact that, like, as I was, you know, a teenager and growing up, I was getting into photography, like a 15-year-old. I was, you know, I grew up in Footscray in the West, and I spent a lot of time walking around Footscray, which is quite a multicultural area, and just documenting a lot of that, and that was sort of me understanding my place in there and my belonging within that place. It was also quite funny because I had some friends, you know, not from the West, and they were scared of, oh, dangerous footscape, which seemed completely foreign to me because I felt so comfortable there, and I made myself so comfortable there by, by just navigating the space and getting to know it. So I've always sort of been thinking about being in spaces and where you live and how you relate to these spaces, but I think as time has gone on, it's also just thinking about how these places change and environments change, and also... I've recently moved back to the West and it's reflecting how these environments have been developed and some are positive developments, other things it's, you know, gentrification, other things, all these ways that cities change without much like autonomy of people who live within them or communities who live within them, these things just get, new things get developed without really having, people having a say in how these things happen. And I think in terms of inspiration to that, like my partner is an urban planner, or they studied urban planning, and been, I was along with them a lot when they were writing the whole master's thesis and all that, and I've been thinking, over the last few years, been thinking a lot about, yeah, about city planning and about how, how big cities are built and assembled and how all sorts of things about community consultation, all these sort of different things inform how a city is assembled and how that relates to communities within that. And sort of trying to reflect that and reflect kind of finding failures of that and failures of just like mess or just junk or sort of other sort of stuff that is not the main point of a city but is just everywhere around us and sort of trying to just understand that or also finding that finding a sort of aesthetic beauty in that because that is just the environment we are within so attempting to process that and find some beauty in that because that's just i'm always looking around and just observing trying to find shapes and things 
patterns and interesting things in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that perfectly um, captured by your recent um, show in the intermission gallery, that video recording. And I think that just mundane thing around the Caulfield campus is, and just brings up memories and yeah, just brings up memories instantly and especially the um, the audio part. I think the audio part is the spirit because um, um, I stand in the space and just for a couple of moments and, and then the um, the train stop uh, train station announcement just um, comes up and instantly pick up my memories and yeah. Can you tell us about that work? Yeah, I think I, I like, thank you for <laughs> what you said about it. I mean, I, the context of this work, like the show at Intermission was this tree work in progress. It was a two channel video, one of which was these very still static shots of just from around the Caulfield campus or on the rooftop of the Caulfield, old Caulfield Plaza car park and of like the big screen when it was turned off in the green and then the other shot was from a slow motion shot from when some arborists were trimming at the one of the big eucalypts in the middle of the Caulfield campus as well um, and then I had field recordings which I recorded just with my these little headphone microphones which was another like a 50 minute loop of all these different field recordings in the last few weeks or a month or two all from around campus as well and it was a bit it was the for me, a lot of that process is even just the process of recording that. It's quite fun and quite satisfying. There's something about not being satisfied with just simply observing or existing in the world, but often also wanting to doc document your own observ observance of the world and existence and creating these really long, but doing these sort of long form, slow, durational kind of works that create an experience of sitting within them or replicate that experience of being within a place or a space for other people. So that I, I like what you said about how you can get a vote we all memories can get evoked just by the experience of being in there and being sort of taken back to being somewhere else or having that feeling of being within this setting or something else. Um, yeah, and so it's a mix of that. It's a mix. I think it's quite fun to how having quite slow, te like quite boring, not necessarily the most thrilling content creates a really different experience for a viewer or a perceiver of that work because rather than having to be directly engaged or directly trying to process what's going on, you kind of have to sit within it and your mind has to, just wanders. And then it's a much different, a much more different experience of just wandering around and what people think about while you're just within this sort of ambient environment. And yeah, trying to sort of continually kind of keep building those moods or assemble those moods and see what sort of interesting feelings and senses you can evoke in people. And in a way that isn't, like I had a text piece, I had a piece of writing with that which was quite a bit more sort of personal essay, it was pretty just diaristic. And that was a bit my perspective, but it wasn't the core part of the exhibition. It's a piece of text someone could pick up and read, but it wasn't like, this is what this is about. This is my perspective on this environment I presented, but allowing that, having that space for someone else to engage with that and find other perspectives in it. Yeah, I really like that. This not that's not like a, an, um, a formal artist statement for that um, paper, and I really like the pers perspective of you documenting all the process. Yeah. Um, next part, I want to bring um, Shikane in about this memory and belonging. Um, I think memory plays um, another type of role um, in your practice and um, as it simply just trigger one's mind about what they have seen, what they have heard and or what they have um, experienced. Um, um, but how, what do you think about um, these memories and photography contribute to this um, preservation or um, reinterpretation re of um, cultural narratives or traditions? Um, I think in a few ways, it, my practice definitely does relate to memory. Um, growing up, going to, I guess, like a religious school and being involved in my community, it's quite tight-knit um, because we all live close to each other to be able to go to like community events. Um, so I have lots of memories regarding what I've learned growing up um, and different, I guess, cultural experiences growing up um, and being really lucky to, I guess, 
be part of a community here in Melbourne, even if it's quite far from home. Um, I guess that ability, I guess, yeah, to make those connections with people, I guess, anywhere um, in the world, if they are Jewish, is kind of this sort of known unknown. If you go anywhere in the world, like, you've got to find, like, the local synagogue, and then you'll be able to, like, get hooked up with a community, and you'll know everyone, or they'll just invite you over. So I guess being able to recreate sort of um, different, I guess, situations, um, specifically in, I do more studio photography, so it's quite a controlled environment. A lot of these um, memories and ideas growing up and today, um, today more specifically being, you know, outside of, I guess, school and being less, I guess, um, naturally able to just quickly re reconnect with um, people in my community because it's quite still quite distant you know I've got to put more of that effort but there are like these memories of family and community that always come up when I'm taking these photos or specifically in the one portrait that's untitled um, but there is this one portrait where I'm wearing a traditional dress um, from my grandmother um, and it's more from like a Mor Moroccan heritage um, and I guess being given that dress to then wear for this shoot um, felt really, it felt really, I guess, um, I, I could just really connect with, I guess, my history and to remind myself that even in this society, even in, you know, like Melbourne, this fast paced environment, like Western society, I can still um, take a step back and make space for, I guess, where I come from. Um, which I love, and um, yeah, memory is really timeless. I think there is, yeah, time. I don't. I think time isn't so linear, and neither is memory. So I guess recreating these things based on something that isn't necessarily stuck in one time, I can take out what I love from it and re-embed it. You know, often I play music whilst I'm doing my shoots and things like that. So to really be able to feel like I'm doing it, so it's not exactly just putting on a dress or wearing something other, it's making myself that own space in a place where I'm comfortable. Uh. Thank you. Um, as, we, as you mentioned about the, your practice kind of stage and studio photography, and I want to bring um, Chantal here, um, um, as some of your practice is also um, kind of staged, like it's um, being constructed in a way, and I want to ask: Have you ever tried other other type of um, like media um, apart from photography to depict this um, concept of belonging with four women? And um, like, do you find any difference between photography and other types of media? Um, I have tried other forms of media before. I've done some paintings. Um, I just finished a glass class as well. Um, I find photography, for me personally, the like easiest to come across with symbolism, because it's. Um, I find photography really easy to manipulate, and I can work with lighting, costume, like a lot of little elements. Whereas like when I've done, like when I did the glass like class, a lot of my works didn't have meaning because I'm not really too sure how to manipulate and move it to what I sort of want. Um, I find photogra photography and painting like kind of similar. I find that photography and painting, I can manipulate both to convey the different meanings and messages I want. I'm just not a good painter, so. <laughs> Um, thank you. And JK, you also have other practices like painting and I believe printmaking as well. Um, what's your opinion about this different type of media on, on your, um, your capturing or depicting this sense of belonging? Um, I actually, yeah, I used to have a huge history in just painting and when I went to art school I was like, okay, I'm going to be this really great painter. but. That is not where I am. I haven't touched a brush in quite a while, but I think I was told, I think last year by one of my tutors, that 
my work isn't necessarily going to always be painting when I was still kind of stuck in painting, not really sure what to do. But like your work isn't always going to be painting, but it's that painterly lens that I think might be more also relatable for you guys. Because um, you can draw a picture and you can paint a picture, but it's sort of this reconfiguration of objects um, and I guess ideas and in like a specific space that I feel in photography, I'm able to do that, like the same process, but with a different material. Um, and yeah, I do have quite a background in printmaking. I love the process um, and I like working with text. So that is something that I do struggle to, I guess, navigate with photography. I do have um, some video works and I do enjoy video work as well. And I have put text in video work as well. Um, there is one that I've done on like blood light bulbs and it's a, um, it's a satirical video work um, where I do incorporate text, but I do in printmaking use text sort of as an illustration. Um, but I think the reason why I stuck with printmaking as well, rather than I guess drawing or painting as an art practice is because I see, yeah, I see the text more as like an image um, and it's got like strong like roots and like in Hebrew the every single letter has like spiritual meaning and like it's really really interesting um, so I really do love that um, but yeah I'm still trying to see how it is translated into photography if at all but I don't necessarily think that it needs to because um, I think they can have their own sort of processes and I can just approach them differently Thank you. And um, Leon, I want to ask another, um, a bit go back to um, a staged and a mundane, this difference. Um, uh, like, what's your perspective on this different strain to um, de deliver this sense of belonging, this, um, this illusion of memory, and from, from a constructed uh, image and um, and just a mundane scenery, an accidental image? Um, I mean, I feel like they're quite blurred lines between those things as well. I mean, I guess coming to what a few of us are saying about the sort of ease or accessibility of photography and the immediacy of the, immediacy of the, of the image is really appear, appealing. Um, I'm impatient, um, <laughs> and it's also why I have, I mean, I've done a bit, and so that idea of being able to immediately capture a scene and have it recreated within, you know, a piece of film or a, um, some megabytes is quite nice, and I, yeah, um, I think there's different brain realms to it because I think I do I like to rearrange things. As you're always sort of manipulating a scenery. If you're even if you're just necessarily capturing capturing things, you're manipulating it just by sort of how you decide to compose an image or how you move around. And I will just have these silly little rules about composition, or something else. You're always constantly shuffling a tiny bit so that little tree's just there or something else. That little line is going just the way it's supposed to go, um, and will move objects around a bit in the frame, but it's not quite the same as doing a proper, a sort of staged, um, sort of studio kind of imagery, um, which I think I have a lot of admiration for, but I like a really sort of experimental approach and I often don't find I have the time in that sort of studio thing or the, to really get there. I do appreciate the use of though, and I think something I would like to get into more is like how you can use lighting and stuff to really manipulate or accentuate or play with the scene is quite fun. I think that's the appeal as well if you're, you're doing a sort of studio practice. And I, as I, I also like studied film and I was a cinematographer sort of for a while. And that was a bit more fun because that was like you were actually, you had a whole crew behind you, you had an idea in mind, but then you were really out of work with like lighting and other things that really sort of like really make the most out of the sequence. Um, but yeah, I think I think in terms of for me and the mundane the mundanity, I think it is like that immediacy, that sort of diary kind of like approach. I think um, it's just 
that yeah, it's it's for me. There's a di there's two aspects in terms of there's both the presentation the images and the curation of them, which I can struggle a bit with more. But the first step is just the sort of doc the, just the documentation, the observation, and just collecting masses and masses of images and going back to my exhibition and like those sound recordings, just having like hun you know hours of just audio that I've recorded for some reason and like gigabytes. I've got hundreds of gigabytes of just photos from years of photos on my hard drives for. Why? Because that's just what you do, you just keep taking photos. So that's such a core part of like how I sort of, you know, exist in the world. So, um, and that's just continuing on that process, to continue to just continue to just keep observing the world, understanding the world, and as your perspective and as your interests change and as your fascinations change, what you document, what you choose also changes, but it's quite reactive, it's really, really responsive and quite immediate in a fun way. And then you've got to deal with what you do with them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, the, the whole process of doing photography is really fascinating because I mind with myself also have a bit of it um, with a practice and um, having this large storage is um, essential and the whole process is also just, it's just interesting and I want to ask um, Chantal, have you ever encounter any like difficulties because um, the, this whole process of doing photography um, when you try to do in the composition or other other elements and it is sometimes just um, annoying and um, you just have to get right um, I, I, I want to ask have you ever encountered any like significant um, obstacles? Of depicting um, this like added identity for women, I uh, I definitely have. Um, I find that like the, the issues I tackle in my photography, they're very broad. So it's every femme preser person's experience is different, and no experience is the same. So it's. Like, a lot of my work is based off my personal, like, feelings and everything like that. Um, so it can be hard to articulate exactly what I want to say. I also find that since the topics I cover are so, like, weighty, um, they can be hard to talk about or even make just because they're quite, like, like, it focuses on very serious issues, so it can make people uncomfortable because they're uncomfortable topics they need to be spoken about but it can be like upsetting or awkward or like I've had times where I've discussed my art with someone and they've started crying so then I've started crying and then we've both been crying together over the artwork because um, it just they relate to it in a way and then they tell me their story and then I relate to their story um, it does create like a really nice energy where we're both supporting one another but it can be really difficult to like listen to. Um, I do find that it's easy for a lot of femme presenting people to talk about their experiences when like to me when I they view my work because um, there's a statistic that's like 97% of women have experienced sexual harassment so there is a large chunk of women and femme presenting people who have seen or been through or have a friend who's been through something that I'm talking about in the artwork. So that makes it a little easier. I like the idea that my artwork can help find someone's voice to speak out about something or even just like, again, like tell me like, oh, I had something like this happen as well. That way they're not keeping it all to themselves. They've at least got someone that they're like, I feel less alone now because I can relate to this. Yeah. Um, so, um, as we getting close, um, next part I want to talk about a bit more about the personal size um, and Serena. Um, I want to ask Liz, um, is finding recurring patterns and subjects in your practice. Um, um, this utilize of um, repetition. Um, 
do you think that through this um, documentation and where you travel, um, where you live, um, pointed out any kind kind of um, direction of um, placing yourself in this um, photography uh, field or or in art world in general? Um, I guess repetition, like. Um, yeah, I think it plays more into that idea, I guess, of like the mundane, I suppose, like the repetition of seeing things every day, but um, I don't know, I feel like <laughs> a lot of the, when I think about what I'm doing stuff, it, to me I'm trying to find the humour in things a little bit, um, and setting the challenge, of, or not the challenge, but it's interesting to look back on or reflect on the things you've collected and it's like how many did I truly see I suppose um but yeah I guess it does always bring you back to place and time and especially traveling like in foreign landscapes um especially things that are like far like unfamiliar to me um yeah I also that method of collection um and not manipulating the images or just letting them exist how they are um, is important to me, I suppose, just to um, allow them to like exist in the world and it doesn't need to change, I guess. But yeah, the possibilities of it are kind of endless, I suppose, like there's always going to be these things that repeat throughout my life and that kind of plays into coincidence and chance and um yeah and and there's like not really time limits as well uh i mean for some there are but for some there aren't which is nice you can it's a continuous thing and it kind of ends when i decide for it to end i don't think that really answered the question but <laughs> but you know um and um Le leon has as you have more um experience on photography um how do you think this current situation, this digital format, influences the way um, people connect with their cultural identities and engage in this um, preservation of cultural aspects and expressing their ideas? And um, and how do you see yourselves as, be, as being these um, mundane sceneries and in this art world? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the sort of digital or current situation, I think it's interesting, since Serena mentioned Instagram um, and sort of social media, I have always been a photographer on the internet in some way, like my first social media platform was Flickr, which was the <laughs> great little photography website. <laughs> um, which was a great, it was a really, it was a phenomenal way to connect with other like photographers both here in Melbourne and like all, you know, teen photographer group from all these different people from around the world. But it was just this way of sharing your images and developing as an artist through that. And I, from then it was like using such places like Tumblr as well to share your images and then of course Instagram. And I think it's interesting thing about Instagram is that it has, it was such an important impact on photography when it sort of came about. You know, suddenly everyone was shooting square format and it was this for a, while, for a long while, a really core part of, like a lot of photographers were on that platform. It was a great way that suddenly made everyone a photographer or everyone who was very much your, how you use the images became such a core thing. But I also find it interesting how as a platform, it's moving away from that. They don't want, they don't care about photos anymore. They want videos, they want reels, they want other stuff. It's just ads. I hate it now. I can't, I hate Instagram. But it's, and it's still somehow, but it's still somehow like core to us as artists to somehow we're meant to exist on this platform that has, for a while, was so useful at, for artistic expression, but it's because of it's just the fact that it's just controlled by this corporation who just want to make money off you, and they want it. They've got a particular idea, like that they want that of what content suits what things suit the algorithm. Is that there's all these things working against actual art, artists being able to exist on these platforms and share stuff and share just their own practices, and I think we could do better to sort of find ways to move away from those sort of platforms to try and have other like less, you know, capitalist exploitative platforms to still share our artworks and share our images and how we can exist. Um, yeah. 
because I think it is it's good to preserve things. It's good to document who you, how you're in the world. And I think there's some. I think in terms of this repetition, I, I love taking photos of like so many. I take so many photos of the same thing, and I, you know, I like I love posting photo sets where it's just like ten photos for basically the exact same photo, but it's every photo on my roll of that little image. Mm. And it's a bit of a kind of. It's quite funny to think about. If you think about film photography, this was so that's such an expensive process because it's just each of those frames is a whole process. And if you think, you know, this the whole idea of mechanical reproduction was this idea of being able to recreate images is such a new thing just in the 20th century beforehand didn't exist at all. And now we're at this stage where yes, storage is still expensive, but it's not that expensive. You can have thousands, thousands of images where just we, there's an immensity of content, and that's kind of fun because you can just do whatever you want with it. And you can there's so many variations and different distortions of images and how you can sort of play with those ideas or play with that and just capture lots of stuff is I think quite fun. And yeah, but as I said, I think we should find ways to still kind of preserve and express ourselves and have documentations and practices that aren't at the whims of corporations that could take them all down one day. Thank you. And um, b before before we finish, um, I want to ask, um, Chantel or Chukai, do you have any final thoughts about um, um, what we discussed today? Um, I do agree with Leon. They've put it really well with the um, the like Instagram and the like. Yeah, you explained it really well with the like. It's a big like photography now is very like mass produced. It's like, I don't know if this is just my experience, but it's like, seen as really easy. And like, there's a little part of me now that's like, oh, it's not real artwork. Um, and I find that every photographer I talk to where I talk about that, they also are like, yeah, it doesn't feel real um, because it's so easily mass put on. And I think also now that we've got like our phones that have cameras, um, it doesn't feel as like hefty anymore. And I think there's, a sense of belonging in the photography community with that because everyone can relate to feeling like it's not real work it's fine but it is real work we've done amazing um, yeah i mean sure on that like um i mean it, it's sick so much until it, it actually the, the artwork, I mean, the photo that you do choose to be the actual artwork, like at least in my case, it takes so long to get there sometimes, and I think it gives you a new appreciation of, um, of photography. Like when I started photography, you know, I just did it because, and I just tried it out a bit more. Like I had take, taken lots of photos, you know, way back on, on Instagram when I was younger, or whatever even, um, and I thought like, oh, I'm such a photographer back then. <laughs> Um, but I never really thought of myself as a photo photographer or ever would be one because of this kind of mass production of imagery. Um, and I thought, well, what can I make that'll actually be different? Or what can I make that'll actually speak to anyone if everything is just so quick? Um, but I think the whole process of trying to make, take one, at least like in my case, like how I do it is like, you know, and I'm sure you all do the same thing, but translated differently. Like you do one thing or take one photo and try, you know, like set it up in one specific way. Like for the shoot that I'm doing with the Last Supper today, like before I got here, was my fourth shoot for the same thing. Um, <laughs> like it's a huge shoot. Like we got to be 13 people, you know. Like, <laughs> and for that to take four times to do it each time, it's like at least four hours, five hours each shoot. Like, there's a lot of effort goes in, that goes into it. But once you know you've got the one thing, as long as like I know, I feel that artists just feel comfortable themselves and say, hey, that's good, this is a good image, and there might be a lot of imagery around, but this is a good one, and this one isn't gonna just go into the trash and isn't just gonna be taken and just ignored. Um, yeah, so as long as, you know, we have like a conscious approach to image making in one way or another, um, photography still lives. <laughs> Thank you. Um, before we finish, um, does anyone have um, have question for the others? No. Okay. Um, 
And once again, I thank you all um, for the participation and sharing your ideas and um, thoughts about your practice, about photography. And, and I thank you all for your patience for listening to this panel. And um, thank you. Thank you.